Hello everyone and welcome back to Etalon. For today's video, I wanted to delve more into an expressive doll, so to speak. With social isolation and the state of the world currently, it's been really hard on us all. I always find it comforting and therapeutic to just let it out sometimes. I more do this in the traditional medium of work that I do, which I keep private from my doll work, but I wanted to show you today. I wanted to translate those themes and techniques into a doll. Starting off with Ascara Screams as a base from the Monster High range, I used the Dremel to create two holes in her body, one in the chest and one in the stomach. I plan to build up a skeleton structure, later filling it in with resin. I've done this technique before in my earlier work. I've used real flowers and I've also created a koi pond tummy. An amazing artist who's done a similar design is Who Dolls on Instagram with their clockwork doll. Links to their page will be in the description below. I definitely recommend checking out their work. The doll itself is hollow, so making a cavity out of some sort of epoxy is a must. I'll be filling in the hole later with resin, so making a cavity just ensures that I'm actually able to cure the resin and it doesn't free float uncured in the body. In developing the skeleton, I'm going to start with gardening wire and start developing the sternum on the chest. The sternum basically is the bit that holds your ribs in a kind of cavity um, structure. So in order to make it solid and being able to develop this as bones, I'm going to be using Army Painter Green Stuff, which is a two-part epoxy. By making some sausages, I'm able to mold the ribs in place. Once the epoxy is cured, it generally takes about 24 hours for that. I sanded the doll for a really long time. Basically, I wanted to make sure there was no edges or crease lines and no roughness. I wanted it to be really, really smooth. Using Arabon Black, I paint the holes. While I do paint the spine black, I will be painting the ribs white. White bases and black bases give different shades and highlights when you colour the stuff on top, so I wanted to make sure that there was that slight differentiation of these two different bones. After this, I use a wraith bone as a base paint. I start painting the green stuff that's on her skin. Mixing up some paint, I'm able to recreate the colour of her skin and paint over the wraith bone and it blends right into her skin again. With some Citadel Black spray paint, I decided to give her some ashed hands and feet by spritzing the paint. While I could have used airbrush for, for more of an even application, I quite like the speckled effect. Mm -hmm. 
Picking up Citadel-based Retributor armor, I start by painting the skeleton and heart. Using a yellow-based metallic on a green-based model is almost blasphemous to colour theory. I wanted to use gold as it would be a really cool contrast to the blue tones in this model. If I used silver, it would almost be lost. Using some Xiao Xiao DIY UV resin and a UV lamp, I start filling in the holes. For the chest cavity, I made sure that there was a shelf for the heart to sit in so it can lay flat. Making a small layer of resin, curing it before adding the heart works fine. Off camera, I also sewed some basic bra and knickers and I embroidered them with some gold embroidery yarn. Onto her face, I gave her a spray of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish and use some Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils to start building up her For facial her features. eyes, I wanted them to be looking downwards in a very absent gaze. In developing that style, I highlighted the centre of her lids. I also added in some quite heavy eye bags underneath her eyelids. With this doll's face, I had actually spent a whole day on a previous face up, but unfortunately, as I was close to finishing it, I dropped it while the varnish was still wet and it created irreversible damage to her face. It was really unfortunate because I was really happy with it and I had to eventually just remove the face and start again from scratch. Unfortunately in life these things happen and especially in art. I suppose it's always better to just accept that it's happened and just work with what you've learned. In this circumstance I chucked on the HBO show Chernobyl and just started again. It took six hours straight to remake her face, but I eventually was quite happy with it, and I felt very accomplished. I suppose dwelling on these kinds of mistakes takes away from actually learning from them and learning how to grow from it. Art is always about learning. Every time you pick up a pen or you pick up a brush, you're learning and you're being better than you were before. So, I suppose, you know, it happened, but I'm okay with it.
With some soft pastels, I build up the shadows in her face. I use grey and black for this, as using browns on a green skin tone would make it look muddy. For her eyelashes, as she will be looking down, I develop the eyelashes to be black, later going over them with a new layer with white. This makes a highlighted effect, and the black on the previous layer acts as the shadowy underlayer. I also blushed her face with some of my makeup highlighter. Doing this adds some ethereal, natural shimmers to her face, but mostly it's for photos. It's nice to have some texture and dimension in her skin, and it will be picked up beautifully in studio lights. With my grey pencil, I start with sketching out some tears, later going over them with some black for a base colour. Then I'll be painting them with the same gold as her bones. After I sprayed her face with some MSC, I realised that the metallic is lost and the shimmer is just dulled. So later on, I will be going over it again, to just bring that out again. her hair, I pulled out some dark blue, light blue and grey 100% acrylic yarn from my stock box. I'll be using the darkest blue as the main colour. Grabbing some of the yarn, I wrap it around a chopstick and brush them out with a dog brush. In this, I'm going to be making some loose fibre bundles and that will be used for braids later on. I initially wanted her hair to be black and using the hair that she originally had but I realised very quickly that it's really patchy and I didn't have any synthetic hair to bulk it up, so blue it is. I mapped out some place markers on the scalp to help in planning the style. I'm going to try to recreate Daenerys Targaryen's Dragonstone six-strand braid ponytail from season seven of Game of Thrones. It's a lot of words, um, but I'll put a picture up to show the context. While it's not exact, it will follow the same style and theme. I think since my fawn, I've been infatuated with Westerosi hair on dolls. They're just so much fun to make and they come out really beautiful. Using some quick dry PVA glue, I grab some loose fibers and place them on the edges of her hair for some baby hairs. 
I always like adding conventional imperfections, or character, as I like to call it, as I think it makes something more beautiful. With some wefts I made with the dark blue yarn, I build it up with some downward facing hair. I pin it to the scalp as it helps hold it really taut to the skin while the glue dries. I also do this on the hairline as it makes it really tightly stuck to the skin. This stops any gaps from forming when styling. There's nothing worse than having to add more glue later on and it corroding the face paint or the wefts lifting up and showing rerouting scars. With the braids, they'll be positioned three down from the ear to the widow's peak. These wefts will sit front facing as they will be flipped later on, creating a hairline. Once the hair is all stuck and the temporary braids have been allocated, I just iron down the hair with the straightener so it sits nice and flat. I also go over the hair with unused toothbrush and some water. With the braids, I grab some of the bundles that I made earlier and start braiding them into the hair. Having the different colours makes some really nice highlights and lowlights in the braids itself, which looks really beautiful when assembled. Development of the style took a little while. It consisted of trial and error and staring at the back of Amelia Clark's head for way too long than normal. <laughs> With the middle braids, I grab them, wrap them and tie them off underneath the hair as it will create a mock ponytail. I then grab the top braids, bringing them back down and holding them in place with a pin. Lastly, I grab the bottom braids closest to the ear, pinning them over the previous braids on the back of her head and in between them. At this point, I realized that I needed to make the braids a little bit longer, so I braided a little bit more and then I'll be wrapping them into a second ponytail later. Once that's done, I fasten off with an elastic and she's done on that. Lastly is to clean up the baby hairs, just giving them a trim and brushing them is enough. I also spray some hairspray onto my fingers and stroke the braids as it makes sure that any flyaways just sit down nice and flat. Last most step before she's done is re-adding the gold shimmer to her tears. Once that's done, she's ready for her photos.
Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of her in the comments below. And if you have any comments and suggestions on how I could improve in the future. As always, make sure to subscribe, and my social links will be listed below. See you in the next video.